So this paper was a rapid risk assessment of COVID's impact on food security in the globe, um, looking particularly at the impact on UK imports from the rest of the world. Um, and it was part of a broader project that looked at the impacts of COVID on food security and nutrition security in the UK as a whole. The UK was obviously already in a state of readjustment due to Brexit prior to the pandemic and all of the sort of legislative policy and practical ramifications for food systems are ongoing in the wake of the withdrawal. For UK imports of food, drink, animal feed, agrochemical inputs have largely remained stable throughout the pandemic. There are airlifted fruit and vegetable imports have experienced greater disruptions during the first national lockdown period in the UK. In early 2021, the food trade with Europe was also quite acutely disrupted by the ending of the Brexit transition period with some interruptions to cross-channel flows at the end of 2020 and the Brexit-related contraction in trade with the EU in the first quarter of 2021. So by and large, the impacts haven't been as severe anywhere in the world as originally anticipated. I think we were quite fortunate globally that we went into the pandemic with good production volumes, good supplies, and where there have been impacts, they've been more due to the economic impacts of coronavirus and, and the economic shocks that's caused on poor and food insecure households. So it's been predominantly in the developing parts of the world where we've seen the largest impacts on people's nutrition security and the estimate is that around 120 million additional households face chronic hunger during 2020 than the year before. At present, much of the UK's food footprint and the associated negative environmental and social costs actually occur offshore. So changes to the UK food system going forward should really ensure that the UK reduces its negative impact of both its offshore and domestic footprint. And rather than offshoring the UK's food footprint, environmental and social costs and benefits need to be internalised and regulated going forward. I think COVID has shown us that global systemic shocks are very real and that we need to be preparing for things that we haven't seen before. And that's certainly true, true of climate change and environmental um, shocks and disasters worldwide as much as it is of COVID. COVID's been slightly different in that it's been a predominantly demand side shock, hasn't really f affected food supply, whereas a lot of the other shocks coming down the track are probably going to be supply shocks. I think it was what, what it's shown is, is although this shock hasn't impacted the food system as badly as it might have done, we're not very well, well prepared and we don't have a great deal of resilience within the food system, particularly to the environmental shocks that are likely to be coming. And I think we've also seen a lack of coordinated action on the COVID front and that really signals the need for global actors to work together to prepare in advance of a shock, but then also when a shock hits to respond and increase resilience.